wrong. Okay, I wouldn't do that. <laughs> it's going brighter and brighter. And I don't know why it does that. Hi, I just want to ask you for a quick favor. And I know you get asked this all the time. But if you get any benefit out of these videos, please subscribe to the channel so that I can put out more videos just like this one. Thanks, and I really do appreciate it. So let's get back to the video. Next, when the manual exposure is selected, there's an option called exposure metering. This exposure meter tool assists setting exposure manually. But what exactly is exposure metering? So when you take a picture or some video, how does the camera know how dark or light the scene should be? Well, inside the camera is a light meter. When you point your camera to a scene to take a picture, and it focuses in and out. It also looks at how bright the image is. It then calculates how much light it needs on the sensor to give the image an average brightness, known as middle gray, or an average bright area, which is like a gray color. That's halfway between black, or underexposed, and white, which is totally overexposed. A lot of cameras have different metering modes on them, like spot metering, center weighted average, or matrix metering. And all they're doing is telling the camera which part of the image to make mid-bright. And for most scenes, your camera gets it right as a picture is probably has a lot of similar amounts of darks and bright areas in it. So they average out. So the camera metering system will try to gather enough light to create a mid-bright image. But sometimes your camera may get it wrong. Here in this scene, we have a bird against a bright sky. The bird is exposed correctly, but your camera may look at this and then say, I'm gonna collect enough light to make this whole image mid-bright. This then means that the whole image comes out too dark because it tried to make the bright sky less bright. So let's take a look at different metering modes and their uses. If you click on the wrench and go to the camera settings, under exposure settings, go to manual. Let's turn on the metering mode. The exposure meters are shown when you press either the shutter speed or ISO buttons. We have one manual metering mode and three automatic modes. The three automatic modes will adjust ISO and shutter speed automatically. Whatever mode you pick will show up as yellow on the menu. So let's stay in manual. The yellow marker represents the luma or brightness value of the scene. The scale itself is from zero to 100% brightness, with a target value for mid gray represented at 40% IRE by the larger marker. The blue needle represents the amount of light reaching the sensor. Note that the image looks fine as we were previously in exposed center mode, so automatic mode was used. And the settings we see now in manual are the same as they were in exposure center. When the blue needle is to the right side, we see the yellow level is high, and that means a lot of light is reaching the sensor. So it'll need a lower ISO value and a faster shutter speed to correct it to mid brightness. So we would need to adjust our shutter speed to a faster level so that it would stop so much light coming into the sensor. Increasing the shutter speed helps correct the exposure, and we can see on the histogram this would be a good place for this scene. Note, we're not trying to get to each exposure level to 40% and the blue bar exactly in the middle of the image. This would only be available if you're on an 18% gray card, a calibrated card, meaning an ideal mid-bright image. In real life, we have lights and darks effect in the scene. When it's to the left, very little light is reaching the camera, so it needs a higher ISO value and slower shutter speeds to achieve more brightness so we get mid-brightness in the scene. The M at the top means we're in manual metering mode. Tap the button at the top and it reveals all the metering modes. The M is highlighted, so we're in manual mode. When you're in one of the auto modes, the metering system will sample the image and automatically set the ISO and shutter speeds for exposure for mid-brightness. In matrix metering mode, 
225 locations in the scene are measured and the ISO and shutter are adjusted automatically to try to achieve mid-brightness as a target. Here we're in matrix mode. We see that if we cover the camera, obviously the scene is too dark. The blue meter is on the left and the yellow brightness marker is very low. Notice the ISO will increase rapidly. When we uncover the camera, the camera decreases the ISO level again. Once the ISO is as low as it can get at 34, the shutter speed now takes over and increases to drive the yellow brightness level down to a mid-bright level again. Center weighted samples the whole frame with additional weight giving to the center of the image. If we go back into the tools under suitcase, we can select show weight center. This now gives you a reticle that you can move around the screen to give you more weight to a particular part of the image. Something like this might work well in a scene like this one with a dog in the snow, for example. So it puts more weight on the actual animal versus all that white snow around it. So let's turn that back off now. Spot metering will show the exposure radical on the screen. This can be moved to wherever you want it on the screen. The exposure meter will only sample the points within that spot to calculate the average for the whole image. If we move it somewhere bright like this, we see that the ISO is as low as it can go so it increases the shutter speed as the area we put it on is very bright part of the scene. Or if you move it to a darker area like down here, we see it brightens the dark areas by slowing the shutter speed and increasing the ISO value. If I move the spot to somewhere in the, in the, like the center of this image, it's adjusted again and everything looks more balanced. Again, the metering system is always trying to adjust the image to mid brightness. If we move the spot again to the brightest area, as it's only taken in the sunburn area for that bright spot, it darkens the image based on where you put the spot. In this case, it makes the entire image look too dark. So most of the time using center weighted or matrix will be your best bet. And in the next video, we'll see how spot mode can be used to set up an exposure from a 18% gray card. There are some extra parameters that you can use in manual control whilst in automatic metering modes, like adjustment speed. This controls how quickly the exposure meter adjusts the changes in light levels. Max shutter angle. The default is 180 degrees, but can be varied from 30 to 340 degrees. The bias control is displayed when the ISO button is selected and this can be very useful. And this is used to offset the target, making the image brighter or darker by a set amount of plus or minus two. Show weight center will show the location of the center weight, as we've already seen. And this area can be moved around the screen if you want to apply a, a additional weight to a particular part of the screen. You can also set the maximum ISO value from 250 to 1000 or leave it on auto. Here are a few examples that we can look at. One will be shot with exposure mode in center under Rec. 709 10 bit and others will be shot at exposure metering matrix mode and we'll use HLG 10 bit log plus standard plus. An HLG is basically a format that's trying to display a better quality image than the standard dynamic range image. So it can try to handle darks and highlights a little bit better. All right, let's take a look.
If you want to take your filmmaking to another level, check out our online courses where you can learn everything about your camera, from filming techniques using the latest apps, as well as editing in different programs and color grading. It's a start to finish set of courses that build on each other to demystify this filmmaking process that we're all into. Not only can you get the entire premium pack, which allows you to get everything we ever put out, but you can also just buy particular courses. Let's say you're interested only in the DJI Pocket Masterclass, for example. This way you can pick and choose what you want. Anyway, I truly believe these courses will help get you to the next level of your filmmaking journey. So check it out.